Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back again with another video. Today's video is featuring the new kit from Hero Arts, October, My Monthly Hero. Um, but we're also going to use some of the add-on products. Um, basically, we're going to make two shadow box cards. And I just really wanted to show you that you can use something like the kit to do it. But then you can also use other things that you have in your stash to get the same kind of effect. And then we're going to talk about these iridescent embossing powders. So here, I got some new embossing powders from Hero Arts. I just wanted to give you like some examples on white and black. Love the rose gold, love the platinum. Those are great neutrals. Uh, they have an iridescent gold. And then the other gold that you see is just their regular gold. Now the iridescent purple and blue, you can barely see on white, but as you can see on the dark card stock, they come through completely different. We're going to be using them on white and on darker colored card stock today. Um, I know that there are other companies that have iridescent embossing powder, but it's actually not that common. And this is the first time I've ever used it, and I super, super loved it. So yeah, we're going to make two shadow box cards. One is going to be purple, one is going to be blue big shock because those are the iridescent colors that I have, um, but that's what we're doing. So here I'm just showing you, I'm kind of laying out my pieces. I know that my front piece is going to be white, and then I actually mixed up the two. This one single tree, it needs to go on the, um, I think it's passion flower, and the dark, the larger one needs to go on the amethyst. Before we get into the actual card making, here what I'm doing, isn't it funny how old habits like die hard? I'm so used to like having to smush my embossing ink onto, <laughs> onto cardstock if I want to cover a whole piece because I didn't always have the pouncers. And then like halfway through, I was like, genius, you're making a mess for absolutely no reason. Get the pouncer. So that's what I did. <laughs> and this is just clear embossing ink because I wanted to show you what the embossing powder looked like on white because when I do it, I'm going to add color behind it. And so I didn't want you to be like, oh, Kelly, it only looks purple because you added color behind it. Um, no, it doesn't. It actually looks purple in the light just based on the embossing powder. A couple of things to note about these embossing powders. They are so fine. Like, they, this is some of the finest embossing powder I have ever used. And what I mean by that is, I mean, it is... It's like almost like dumping flour on your project. Like it is so <laughs> fine. Um, and here, so this is just me heating it. And you can start to kind of see in the corner where it's catching the light. Uh, I'll show you the whole piece once the, once the whole thing is heat embossed. I really enjoyed the look that these give. Um, and especially with like winter coming up, I can totally see using these in white for like subtle snowflakes or a subtle shine on like some snow scenes. Um, I can see using them on darker cardstock to, you know, create some snowflakes in a night scene or, um, you know, just add some interest on colored cardstock, which is what we're going to do for the second card. Um, but there were a couple of things that I noticed. First, when you use the embossing powder, um, it almost always leaves like a little bit of a film. Um, and you'll see later on, I just, once everything was heat embossed, you don't want to brush it off beforehand. But once it's heat embossed, I just went in with a uh, dry, like larger paintbrush and just brushed it off. And I didn't have any issues with that. Um, here, what I'm doing is I'm going in, this is passion flower. It's the same, it matches the card stocks, you know, because Hero Arts does everything matchy-matchy, which I totally appreciate because I'm a matchy-matchy person. Um, but so I wanted to just add a little bit of color and I didn't take it all the way up just around the snow. And then I'm going to go in with my pouncer. For this first card, I did pounce this whole panel so that the whole panel, including the trees, has that iridescent shine. Um, when we do the second card, I'm not going to do the whole panel. But um, if you don't want to add the color, like if you don't want to add the uh, ink blending at the bottom, you could have just used the first panel that we did and just die cut it and the whole thing would have that iridescent shine. Um, but since I wanted to add the color, I mean, it's still embossing powder. It's still going to act as a resist. So if you do the embossing first, you can't add the color on top later. You know what I'm saying? Pick it up what I'm putting down. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go through. We're going to 
and you can see on the lid. Do you see how purple that is on the lid? Like, that's what it looks like on black. And it's fantastic. So we're just going to go through and heat set this. Um, this is, because it is so fine, um, normally I would be worried about embossing powder warping my dyes or adding too much bulk to them. But because this is such a fine powder, it really doesn't. It doesn't really change the weight of the cardstock at all. Um, it just adds this kind of iridescent shine to it. And I think it's really lovely. Um, now I'm going to put this, I'm going to lay this in place so I can get the placement for my next layer. Um, you don't have to do these as a shadow box, PPS. Like, you don't you don't have to, to do that. Um, you can just layer them up right on top of each other, and it would still be a beautiful scene. I just thought using the shadow box would make them a bit more interesting. Um, little did I know that that was actually going to drive me insane. <laughs> it was going to drive me insane. <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit, too. Oh, man. Um, so, anywho, I cut it out of Passion Flower, and then I cut the back layer out of Amethyst. I didn't, I don't know why, like I didn't put two and two together that I really needed to cut the front portion out of my actual shadow box piece, um, but I'll figure it out later on, <laughs> figure it out later on. Um, so yeah, so we're just going to go through, do that die cutting. I didn't add any of the iridescent shine to the back layers on this one, but again, you totally could. So now we have all of the layers cut out and I realized that I need a back piece. So this is what it looks like with white, which I think is really pretty, but I really liked the um, eggplant, like the dark purple, um, so that each consecutive layer is a darker purple. Here's where we're going to do the shadow piece. So in order to build the shadow box piece, you need a, for a portrait card, you need a five and a half by six and a quarter piece of white cardstock. On the long side, on the six and the quarter side, you are going to score at a quarter of an inch and half an inch and at one inch on both sides. So this is what's going to give us the little springs. If you wanted to add in a fourth layer, you could also um, score at three quarters of an inch and it would just give you another layer to adhere to. Um, but then you're going to fold the top piece back towards the back of the card and uh, run your bone folder along that to just get a really nice good crease. And then you're going to fold your next piece up towards the front so it creates this Z, and then the last piece will again be folded back, and that's what's going to create that spring. We have done this once before, I believe, and obviously, like, I saw this just like I'm sure all the rest of you did. I saw this on Jennifer McGuire's channel. She's brilliant, that engineer mind. Um, and so that that is where I'm, I'm getting the whatever, how I'm putting it together. You know what I'm saying? This is not in my original idea. I have a video coming up on talking about casing other people's cards. So here's where I realize, hey, genius, you need to cut out this piece <laughs> out of the front or you're not going to have anything uh, to frame your card. So um, I did cut it out of the front. And now because I don't want to have to go through the process of inking up everything and doing the heat embossing and all of that again, I'm just going to adhere the piece that I did make to the front. Um, and that's totally fine. There was no issues not. I am using my glue press with the fine tip. That worked really well um, to get glue into those little areas without there being too much of a problem. The only thing that I will tell you is when I was putting it down, make sure that you're getting all of your little edges lined up because here you're going to see in a second I have like this bubble and it's because my right corner adhered down before my left corner and my right corner was not in the right place. So in order to have everything flush, just make sure you're you're paying attention to how everything is adhering before it sets because then you won't be able to move it. So now once we have that piece done, I'm going to flip the shadow box portion over and then for my first layer, I'm going to hear it adhere it directly behind. So this is right up against the back of the card. Um, and for each one of these little layers, you do want to trim them down slightly smaller than an A2 size card, because otherwise you're going to run into the problem that I did, which is they were like bowing. And they were bowing because I wasn't giving them enough, like I was applying too much pressure to the sides with my spring. So now for the third layer, I'm adhering it to the next fold 
Um, so there is a pretty good gap between the first layer and the second layer. Um, but if you wanted them to be closer together, again, you could do a score, um, a score and then a fold at three quarters of an inch and you would, they would be closer together. To finish the whole thing off, I am going to adhere this eggplant piece to the very back. You could make this your card base, or in my case, it's just a cardstock panel because I don't want my base to be purple. Um, and then I think part of the problems that I ran into with everything moving was this was because I was using liquid adhesive. Um, my The liquid adhesive from Hero Arts is really great and it's super strong, but it is still liquid adhesive. I probably would have had an easier time if I used score tape, but I don't like using tape because then I can't wiggle it. And I am a person who needs some wiggle. It's just, so I, I guess I'd rather fight it out. Um, but then this is how the scene looks. Um, and I'm just kind of, again, wiggling it around, making sure everything is how it's supposed to look. Um, and then we're going to worry about the sentiments later. So this is card number one, and this is the card with the kit. Now, let's look at, this is just me messing around with this, um, let's look at how we can then change this into using other products that are not landscape dyes. So this is the same piece that we created before, um, our shadow box piece, the scoring's all the same, but I have to create a frame out of the front. So I'm using my uh, infinity dies from Hero Arts and I'm just going to cut out a rectangle. You can make this any shape that you want. I chose to go with a rectangle just because I thought it would give me the biggest window to show everything. And then I'm going to lay it on top of another piece of white cardstock. I'm going to use a white colored pencil to just give myself a ground area so I know where to stamp my little deer. This deer is from the folk art set from Hero Arts. And it has some, you don't have to do the stamping, but it has some really pretty, um, kind of intricate designs all the animals in that folk art animal set do and so I didn't want to miss the opportunity to utilize it even though it wasn't going to um be seen except for when the light catches it because you know you can barely see this iridescent powder on the white so I stamped it down with Versamark and um I'm not gonna lie to you I had to try a couple of times to get a good impression and I think it's because um, it is such a fine powder, but I think it has something to do with my paper. And I'm not really sure why, because I did not have that problem on the Hero Arts cardstock. This is Nina. Um, and so I just think for some reason it I, it doesn't like my Nina, but I don't know why. Um, but anyway, so the second time I stamped it, I got a much better impression. You can see that here. It was... Um, you know, I had to make sure that my ink pad was super juicy and that I embossed it right away. Um, but there you can see that the deer... Now, in order to create the pieces to build the shadow box, we have to do partial die cutting. So I've got my deer in place. In order to do the partial die cutting, I'm going to let the little deer feet hang off of my cutting plates. So that way there's no pressure on that portion of the die and that portion of the die will not cut. Consequently, it will leave my deer attached to the paper in that section. So now you can see it's only partially cut. I can go in with my scissors and follow that line that I drew in order to get some like swoopy um, slopes for my snow and still have an area in which I will be able to attach this to my shadow box frame. So it will look just like this. And by the way, we switched to the blue iridescent powder, if I didn't say, I don't think I did say that, but we switched. So in order to add the inking for this one, I am using dusty blue. Um, and again, I'm just adding it in the snow area. I'm also going to add it to the outside frame of the shadow box. Um, and this time just on the bottom. I'm just adding it on to just the bottom so it kind of blends in. In hindsight, could I have adhered my deer to the front of my card? Yes, I could have, but I didn't. I chose for it to be my first layer behind. I don't know if that was an error on my part or not. 
just being real. So now we're going to do the same thing. This is sped up quite a bit because you've seen it already, but I am going to go in. I'm going to do my little pouncing. I did not do the whole frame. I just did the bottom portion for the blue iridescent. Um, and honestly, like blue is my boyfriend. You guys know that. But I don't know which one I like better. If I like the purple iridescent or the blue iridescent for snow, I think they're both really beautiful. Um, and so I'm, you know, putting that on there. You saw me just wipe it off the sides just so that way it wouldn't interfere with any of my creases for my shadow box. And then I'm going to heat set this. You can obviously see in the light that beautiful blue iridescent glow. Um, and you're like, you'll still be able to see it in the light, even from like this, the stamping portion. So now once we have that done, now we're going to go in. You do not, just like I told you, you didn't have to stamp the deer. You don't have to stamp the trees either, but it gives you another opportunity to bring in that iridescent powder. And that's really what I wanted because I thought it was stunning. I think that for a very simple such snow scene, it's something that's like extra you can add without really a whole lot of work. So if you didn't want to use the stamping, you would just use your die cuts and do the partial die cutting so that you would have the tree outline. Um, but I chose to do the stamping. Here's the first time you're really going to get to see that film that I was talking about that it leaves behind on the paper. Again, don't brush this off until after you've heat set or you will brush off the embossing powder that's sticking to your embossing ink. But here's where we really start to get our first look at the blue, like being blue, and I love it. I think it's beautiful. I'm going to stamp another tree. Do I have regrets about this? Not for the way that it looks, but for the pain that it caused me. Yes, I do. So I stamped another tree, but I stamped it slightly further down on the hill which meant that when I went to go do my die cutting, my items were not lined up. So I had to worry about die cutting into the next tree. And can I just tell you that this card almost broke me? <laughs> like, it was just not my day. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not a perfect person. I'm flawed. I get frustrated and aggravated and, you know, just like just like everybody else does. And here in a minute, you're going to see that my nail polish color changes. And it's because I was so frustrated with trying to get this thing to run through my die cutting machine um, that I just had to walk away. Like, I lit like at one point I had to say to myself, like, Kelly, you cannot launch this cutting plate through the window because you're a 40 year old woman and the only person cleaning up that mess is you and the only person paying to replace that window is you. So, like, get it together, girl. So, I just, like, I, I just had to walk away because why did this not occur to me later on? I do not know. Like, at the time, I think I was just super frustrated with the process, I could have just cut them out by hand. <laughs> like, I could have just cut them out by hand instead of getting so mad about it. Um, but I didn't. So, anywho, I did have to put them through my um, Spellbinders Platinum 6 at an angle. And even then, um, like you can see here, this portion of the this first tree that we stamped uh, did not cut out because I couldn't cut it out or I would have cut into the actual second tree. So I just went in and finished it with my scissors. It was like two or three little cuts, no big deal. And again, I just followed that line that I gave myself. Um, and here is our next layer. You don't need to use the stamps that I'm using or the, the, um, the dies that I'm using. You can use any sort of landscape stamps or dies you have to do this. Um, and again, they don't even have to be, uh, they can be single individual images just like these are as long as you leave them attached. So this is the last layer, which is the, um, the kind of like the stick trees. I, they're not, I don't think they're birch trees, but they don't have any leaves on them. They're empty trees. And so I've lined them up to make sure that you'll be able to see them in the final set. And this is, I used, uh, what did I use? Periwinkle for the second layer. And then this is the um, lap, lapis color. They're beautiful blues. Um, and here, Again, you're going to really get to see that blue and you'll get to see that film. Um, 
but you'll see this is the one that I actually left it in where I dusted it off. And I just think they're beautiful. I just think this iridescent blue is stunning. Um, and I really like the gold one too. I'm excited to use that because it's definitely more of a yellow gold, which I don't think you see very often in embossing powders. So here I'm just going to bring in, this is just like a uh, wide, um, like one inch flat brush. And so I just dusted it all off. And um, really, I mean, you can't see too much of it. I mean, I think you probably can see some of it. I don't think that unless you go in and like wipe it with a wet cloth, you'll be able to entirely, you know, get every little bit of it. Um, but definitely not enough that it was noticeable. Again, did my partial die cutting and then I'm just going to go in with my scissors. For this one, I didn't do a line. I kind of just did it straight across because it is my last layer. And so you're going to see very minimal of it. Um, you know, in the wee back there, like back in the weeds of it. Um, so I am just going to go in and cut it straight across. I did have to go in in between the trees and just trim out those sections. But honestly, those sections are what make the die cutting more interesting. So I think it's worth taking the effort to just go in with a little pair of scissors and just clip them out. Um, which is all, all that I'm doing here. Just like I said, straight across. Once again, you could go back in with like the pouncers or um, with the ink pad and just, you know, add some more iridescent um, embossing powder to that, but I didn't think that it was necessary. So now we're going to start building. Here is why I left this part in. Um, so you're going to see that I forgot to trim this one down because remember my white layer went on the front the first time and so I forgot to trim this one down and it was creating an issue for my card not folding. Not to mention that when I first adhered it, I'd adhered it to the part that we didn't ink because I'm not perfect. Um, but anywho, so I'm going to go in once it is adhered, like even though it's just holding it there, um, I don't realize it until this piece goes on and then I'm going to have to like hold it in place because remember I told you I knew I struggled because I used liquid adhesive, um, but I... Uh, I just like held it in place and then I went in with my little scissors you're going to see right here and just trimmed off just a, just a little bit. It doesn't have to look nice and if you're smart and do it beforehand, you won't have the same issue that I did where it's all kind of like bowing out. Um, but I did, I did have that issue and so I had to trim it while it was still attached. Um, like I said, you... Um, you know, if you, if you don't do it the way that, <laughs> if you remember to trim them beforehand, you're going to be fine. Uh, basically is the long and short of that story. Just trim them beforehand. So you don't have the, the bowing issue. Um, so the only thing different with this one is because I do have four layers back behind the frame, this blue one is actually going to be right up against the Navy, which is the nautical cardstock from Hero Arts. And so I did go in and any time where like the trees were touching over and touching the frame, I did glue those. And then this, I'm just going to give a good healthy coat of glue everywhere because really the Navy is just like the backer piece. Um, and so that once that is in place, that's going to be that whole shadow box card. I love, love, love like what the um, iridescent stamping adds to that background. I just think it's like a little bit of magic. Isn't embossing always a little bit of magic? But this is like extra. This is like super extra magic. Um, in the kit, they do have some script word dies that are included. I used the Merry Christmas for the card that we made with the kit items. Alternatively, Hero Arts also has some seasonal dies um, that I'm using for the other one, I just chose Warm Wishes, but they have Merry Christmas, they have Season's Greetings, all of those that, um, you know, are available all the time. And then I did use the shadow die and I just backed it onto some vellum. That way it didn't, it gave me more to adhere to my card, but also it didn't take away from the scene using the vellum. And I'm sure that you've seen like in the, um, 
uh, example cards that the um, the design team created, a lot of people use the vellum. Um, again, because they're great, you know, they're fantastic designers and they know that it's not going to detract away from the scene to have a bit of vellum in the background. The only other thing that I did was I did um, accent my, uh, what is this? my sentiment um, with a couple of rhinestones. These particular rhinestones are from Trinity Stamps. I love them. One is Reflecting Sky. I think the other one is Reflecting Lilac or Lavender. They're really great and they match perfectly. So I just added those on there and then that's it. That's both cards. So I hope it inspires you to give maybe a shadow box landscape like scene card a try. Um, and I would be, I would love to see what you guys make with them as always. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.